I'm happy to have this conversation and to share with you what are some of the things that uh, I thought had been very useful for us and would be lessons that we need to remember when we come across the next pandemic. Uh, there are really five streams uh, of uh, ideas that have shaped the Masip Foundation's programs and initiatives. Uh, you know, all towns and cities are built on riverside and they, and, they, and they do that because they need to draw fresh water. And so it is with the Masip Foundation, we draw upon the five streams. And what are the five streams? Number one is social resilience. Uh, secondly, forgiveness. And thirdly, community mindedness. And fourthly is ethical leadership, and lastly, empathy. Social resilience is really the ability on our part to respond to change and to respond to crisis. So social resilience gives us the ability to cope with that crisis and also teaches us the need to adapt to the change, to the circumstances that affected us and allow us to keep going in the midst of the adversity. Yeah, social resilience, I think, requires a whole of nation and a whole of society approach. And the Masip Foundation is right in the forefront. Uh, one of the first actions we had was to be able to distribute uh, sanitizers. And we mobilized the entire community to be part of this uh, distribution of uh, sanitizers. They brought their own bottles, so we gave them individual responsibility an individual sense of ownership that they are now overcoming uh, the problem. So forgiveness is a great value that we need to bring together in order to be able to face this adversity. I think we need to forgive ourselves, you know, when we feel that, you know, we are hopeless and we are not able to function formally as before. Forgive others who are also dependent uh, upon, upon us, you know, and then forgive whatever policies that the government have put into place uh, so that because this is for the greater good. Forgiveness because government put in strict measures. Uh, you're not able, you need, you need to have social distancing. You're not able to go to certain places, you know, restaurants are closed, certain SMEs are closed, etc. All these are policies that have been put in. These are extraordinary policies, but we are facing extraordinary times. And with the forgiveness comes a state of beginning to realize that this is now a step in the journey of coming together and getting grips uh, with the situation. And now move to the next step. What can I do? What skills future programs can I deal with? How do I cope uh, with su supporting my family? How do I cope with my own sense of well-being? How can NGOs come in and help the elderly away from the sense of loneliness? Community mindedness is first of all, the fact that we do programs that Kamasit does. Whatever the Masip Foundation does is for the common good. So the interest of the community is always at heart uh, for each one of us. Does this program serve the common good? And our common good uh, definition is a, very, is a very extended definition. We want to serve not only the majority of Singapore population, we want to serve every single household. So masks are distributed to every single one of our two million households. Uh, sanitizers are distributed to every single individual uh, within Singapore, every citizen, every uh, resident in, in, in Singapore. So that's community mindedness. We go right to the full length of what is meant by community mindedness. So all our programs are shaped by that uh, in regard to the way that we, we, we make provision. In addition to that, we go down to the, to the, to the smallest detail of what the needs are. What are the needs of students who have to be at home? They need laptops and some families can't afford the laptops. What are the needs of the elderly who are lonely? They need to be provided with food, three, three, three meals a day, for example. What about uh, the, the displaced uh, husbands or wives? How do you provide for them at this particular point of time? So that is what community-mindedness really is. It is a holistic approach to meeting the needs of the community in this particular point of time. When we call for companies to be involved, they come forward quite readily because I think we have developed this habit of thought within Singapore, within this community, uh, in order to have a wonderful community of practice of being collectively 
concern about our community. Ethical leadership is a must. It is really a must in Singapore. Ethical leadership is doing the right thing. The right thing really means doing what is needed by the people who are aggrieved. And I think that's important for us uh, to be able to recognize that. And the leadership is not an arbitrary leadership. It must be intentional. It must achieve the purpose for which uh, it is being done. And it must be in, done in such a way that it meets with high ethical standards. Empathy, I think, is something which, if you look at empathy, it is really meeting the unmet needs of unarticulated uh, demands, you know. So when you look at it in that perspective, from a business perspective, then you have to be innovative. What are the unmet needs? What are the unarticulated demands? Then you become innovative in regard to the way that we do some of these things. The Masih Foundation has got that moral responsibility to look for the best uh, resources in order to help our citizens. So we have become innovative. So these five students just, uh, just rush up, you know, and become like a hit water uh, for Singapore as we face the pandemic. And it just blossoms up into beautiful fountains uh, that will shape uh, our programs uh, from far. Some of these five streams are sometimes unexpressed, unarticulated. But I need to begin to realize that these are things that shape our thought and our programs and our initiatives. And with that, they flow into the bedrock of our Singapore River, from which we draw fresh water, from which we draw fresh resources. And I think all together they will make up is a beautiful Singapore.